So why don't we start with uh, 2012. Okay, 2012. You win the gold medal. Mm -hmm. What's your feeling around that now versus 10 years ago? Has it changed at all when you think back to that? Hmm. Seems like a long time ago at times. It seems like it was forever ago as in the beginning of my career. And now looking at it, it's you realize just how much work and how rare it is. At the time, you're just constantly going and you meet after meet and you're training for it and you expect yourself to do well there. And now looking back at it, you realize how much could actually have gone wrong to get to that point. You know, you have to make the U.S. team. You have to be healthy. You have to make the finals at the Olympic Games. You have to be, you know, place top three, then you have to win. Like it's just, and you realize how much could actually go wrong. So I think the further away I get from it, the more I look back thinking, wow, I'm glad I didn't know all this then. I saw a little bit of luck then, in essence, on top of the insane amount of talent. There is, especially in pole vault, because you need every part of your body. You pole vault, you need your fingers, you need your toes, your hand, your shoulder. And one injury and the entire system derails. And that's kind of what happened the older you get. You know, a knee will start, a back will start. And it's just so easy to get hurt in such a violent event. Yeah. After 2012, you're talking about all the work that it takes to build up mm -hmm. to the main event. How did you get back on the horse? You had gotten the gold. What made you say, you know what, we're going to keep going? I think there's just so many goals that I had and Rick had a lot of goals with me and we're both very driven people. So when I wasn't motivated, he was. When he wasn't motivated, I was. And we kind of just kept pushing each other through it. And in 2013, I set the world record. And it's very rare to win Olympic gold, come back in world record. And then we had world championships in Moscow. And it was constant go where we were one meet after the other after the other indoor outdoor season. So we just had our mind made up that we were going to do as much as we can when we were healthy and when I was jumping well. 2016, obviously, the, the sickness came. Why don't you talk about that? Because you had, again, gotten back on the horse, mm -hmm. training everything right up until that moment. Yes, that was a hard one to deal with, uh, just because I was jumping so well going in. In 2012, I actually tore a quad muscle going into the U.S. trials. So I was very concerned about that, even making the team. And it was a relief once I made the team, because then I knew I was healthy enough to train. Going into the 2016, I was excited, because I knew I was jumping well. I knew where I was in my jump. I was conditioned. I was healthy, and I had been healthy for a long time. So. I think that was almost more uh, devastating of a meet and mentally because I was physically ready to go. How have you dealt with that since? You know, I think it takes time. And after it happened, I honestly just realized, wow, I won a gold and I won a silver. I mean, how can I be mad here? And I think it gave me a perspective to be able to talk better to people, to be able to re explain like what it felt like to be on the very top and then the very low and i never really had experienced that until 216 when it was completely just mentally devastating and then i could talk about it and i knew what i did to get back to you know competing and get back to the mental state that was healthy i know i didn't i, I wonder how many other people understand how sick you really were it wasn't just a, a flu or anything like that yeah they x-rayed my lungs afterwards too and there's still scar tissue on them and that's what with COVID, it was very concerning uh with the doctors they just wanted to make sure that i was going to be okay and stay away from everything until something came out of vaccine just because of what happened in rio and how weak my immune system has been do you think that factored into the decision to retire at all uh, no, no, I, I've done this for a long time. The decision to retire was both of us and we had done what we wanted to and we there's a whole nother life out there we wanted to experience without the rigidity of pole vault and sports. We lived this, like we didn't just do this on the weekends, we 100% lived what we did. And with that, you take a big toll on yourself. And we are done living meet to meet, practice to practice and I mean, we just have so much that we want to do Why we can still do it. We want to hike while our knees can still hike. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And you're mm -hmm. both big travelers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember last time we talked, you, you had talked about getting, I don't know if it ever happened, some type of camper. And Yes, we, we still are talking about that. <laughs> and it's funny is that we want to travel. Like, I want to go see Maine. And, but the rule is the animals have to come. 
like I'm not traveling without the animals, so we're, we're going to have to upgrade from that little 15-footer we have out there because I plan on getting another dog, and I have four cats, so they're all coming. There you go. Where did that love of animals come from, by the way? As a kid, my entire family is like that. My sisters had turkeys and everything you can imagine. So our entire family, we grew up with animals. One thing I was wondering is, you know, you talk about wanting to be good, if not great, at anything you do. How do you, do you move past that? Because that competitive edge might not retire with you. Yeah, we've, it's funny. We've talked about joining things, you know, like a kickball team or a softball team or a bowling league, something because we do like being competitive and we like being in that atmosphere. But I think right now we both are enjoying not being competitive. We're both enjoying just not having to stress about wins and losses. And that's what we say with coaching. Like we just want to coach and help out. And we're doing these little individual kind of training sessions with people, but we don't want to be in the thick of it anymore. Where did that competitive nature come from, do you think, for you? For me, I've always been like that. My grandfather was a golfer and I was out with him young and he was constantly trying to, you know, can we get this closer to the cup than you? So it started young. I just always think that I've been competitive. And Rick had, he's the youngest of uh, three brothers and a sister, so he grew up that way also. Yeah. I want to go back. You talked about how you have the high and you have the low now. And that low, I think, might be able to speak to more people who have gone through something. Maybe they were right on the cusp of getting something. They were in the perfect shape, if you will, mm -hmm. financial or physical or whatever. And then it all falls apart. What's your message to them now that you've actually been through some of that? I think not to let it take your will. Like you will actually almost feel worthless at a time like wow like this is what I have known myself for this is how I identify myself and when it's gone you sort of feel like you lost like just you lost your whole self-worth and I think that was important to learn how to come back from that and not let it take my will keep fighting and honestly you have to be around people that recognize you not for what you are doing but for who you are and that's one thing Rick and I have done we've kept our circle small but the people we have in it I mean they could care whether I pole vault or not and I think that's important are you going to keep pole vaulting in your life to oh, extent? no I am done pole vaulting yes he asked me he's like he goes just stay in shape enough to do drills for camps and I so I'll do some swing drills and stuff but I just I'm done pole vaulting I'm done with the pain I think at 40 years old it's a lot on your body and so I, I've got other hobbies to take up like jogging yeah <laughs> I like jogging's my favorite okay yeah well I gotta start so <laughs> just I've said that for start. two weeks yeah. yeah just be careful because that can get competitive uh, it's okay I don't mind being competitive that because that's like a calorie in calorie out thing so I can do that yeah no absolutely um one thing I've always wondered because uh, researching getting ready for this interview I just saw a lot of pictures and things like that what was the feeling like as you were kind of soaring pole vaulting? It, it happens so quickly, but is there a mentality, a thought that goes through your mind in those moments? It all depends on the bar, honestly. Some bars I've made that have been high but aren't meaningful, so it doesn't mean anything to me. Some bars I've made that are low that someone would wonder why is she celebrating it, but the background going into making that bar is what's important. So it's always a backstory, and that's what determines how great of a feeling it is. So there's some times where I've been, like 2008, I was on my third attempt at a 15-1 bar. If I made it, I was on the Olympic team. If I missed, I was off. I mean, 15-1, I come in at that all the time. It's my opening bar. But when I made that on a third attempt, that jump was more exhilarating than jumping 16-1. So it's all the background information going into what that bar means. Yeah, my last question for you, is this a, f I see this with uh, professional athletes every once in a while, there's a retirement and then there's the re-entry. Is this, is this <laughs> final, you think? This is final. Yes, I am definitely fine. There is no re-entry. Uh, one thing with pole vault and where I am with my status and stuff with track and field was drug testing. So I had to let them know every day where I was for an hour. So every day I had to be accountable from six to seven. So if I went from here and I stayed at my cottage, they had to know I was there. They had to know what I was doing. If I went to the airport, they had to know I was going to the airport at that time. I mean, they've come and met me at a doctor's office in Rochester before. So they've known where I have been for one hour and I'm done at 40 years old living like that. I just, I'm enjoying my freedom. Yeah, uh, you know, I said last question, but there is one. You, you always are very uh, 
quick to point out that this is a partnership. This wasn't just Jen Schur pole vaulting, but also Rick as well. This is a team effort. Now that this is coming to an end, any reflections on that? I think when I talk and when I speak to people and when I talk about pole vault and what we've done, I think the most thing that I'm proud of is that we've stuck with it with the highs and lows together and we pulled each other through because there's times when you just are looking like, maybe I should go back to college. Maybe I, I should get you know a different job. And we've been able to pull each other through those parts of it. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is we started with each other. We started with Adidas. We started with our same agent and we ended with all the same. And I think that says a lot for us and our loyalty and how we're able to overcome things that most people would have retired on. I mean, there's probably three or four times people have counted me out and we just went back in that building and we said, nope, let's refocus ourselves and we did it together. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I remember reading about, so the COVID obviously had a huge impact on the Olympics and everything like that, pushed it back a year. And how did that impact your performance leading into the 2021 yes. year? COVID was very hard, especially when you're at the way upper part of age. So one year is like three to five years. I mean, when they set it back a year, I knew that I was in trouble because I knew I was hanging on already. And I thought, okay, we'll just go to 2021. And that's when I had right Achilles problems, which is normally left, I had right, and then I had double Achilles surgery. And I came back from that. And then I had a pretty bad fall this past uh, spring. I came back from that. So there's been times that I think, oh, I should stop, but I don't want to retire on an injury or be forced to retire. And that's why I kept going because I wanted to retire on my own terms when I was, I was healthy. And that's what you're doing. Yes. Was there one moment, one thing that you said, you know what, this is it? I think when I booked the camping trip to Allegheny Limestone with my family and it was the same day as Worlds and I wanted to go on the camping trip more, <laughs> that's when I knew that, you know what, Rick, it's time for us to get out. Like I was looking forward more to camping with him and my dogs and my family than I was, you know, pole vaulting anymore.